Man. I mean, this will be better in half an hour. That is really good. <laughs> Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGrinding.com and today it is raining outside so it's a perfect damn home all day so it's a perfect day to make some nice, fresh, delicious bread. And uh, what I'm going to show you how to make today is just a really nice sort of rustic, old-fashioned sort of loaf. It's got cornmeal on it, it's got a nice crunch when you bite into it. And it's just a white bread but it tastes really good, really easy to make. This is a great bread for a beginner. I'm going to do a double recipe here since you're going to run the oven anyway, you might as well cook two loaves of bread. The first one's going to disappear in one meal anyway. So uh, let's get started. I'll show you how this goes together. So the first step is to boil some water. And what you want, you can tell this, this thing, I've actually got marker marks, marked with a, a Sharpie. Uh, so what you want is one and three quarter, one and three quarter cups of boiling water. All right, you put that in your bowl. I just got regular yeah, enriched white, white flour here. <laughs> just the regular stuff, right? All-purpose flour. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put two heaping tablespoons of flour in the boiling water. This is an interesting technique. Uh, what happened, and basically you're gonna work that in until all the lumps are gone, right? Right now it's, it's all kinda I don't know how well you can see that, but it's all sort of lumpy and, you know, it just went into clumps. And so you take that and you just smush it with the spoon and mess around with it. It actually has a smell like uh, uh, cream of wheat, believe it or not. But you just sort of work that in a little bit and you make this uh, sort of like slimy <laughs> white water. Um, so what I think this does is, I mean, it really, re so you've got, this is just a tiny, tiny portion of our flour for this recipe. But this little bit of flour is different than all the other flours. And it's gonna have, you know, you're activating the gluten, you're really breaking it down, you're sort of hyper-processing this flour because of the heat, right? Heat does things to different materials. So you're making this little bit of flour fundamentally different than all the other flour in the recipe. And the result is a very soft, nice bread that expands well. Yeah, nice, fluffy, soft bread. Okay, that's close enough. So I still have the odd little lump here and there, but I would say this is sort of like 75% uh, incorporated into the water, that's close enough. You don't have to get crazy with these things, okay? That's, that's good enough, all right? Now, while I got that there, uh, I'm gonna add two, this is just plain old white sugar, two heaping tablespoons of sugar. You can use honey or molasses or whatever you want. I wouldn't add any more than three teaspoons, or sorry, I wouldn't add any, add any more than four or five because you add too much uh, sugar, it can mess, mess up the way bread behaves. And I'm going to add two heaping tablespoons of salt, one for each loaf. Remember, this is a two-loaf recipe. You don't want to go any more than that. Um, you know, if you're on a low-salt diet, use less salt. It's, it, you know, the bread tastes better with some salt in it. A heaping teaspoon per loaf, I find, sort of gives you the optimal uh, flavor. Right? So now that's worked into that. Now you're going to add two cups of just cold water. Right? So I got a cup and one and three quarter cups of boiling water, two cups of cold water. Um, the result of that is you have this, it's perfectly lukewarm. And you don't have to worry about your water being too hot or too cold or whatever. This is just sort of ideal yeast, uh, yeast culturing temperature for water. Okay, now we're gonna start putting some flour in here. I'm gonna put three cups in right off the bat. One, two, Three. All right. I never really measure the flour for this, or the amount of flour I use for this, but I'll show you what to look for. I'll bring the camera in close when it's time, when the dough's sort of had enough flour added to it. So I like to mix in three with it. You know, you can give it a really good mix. Um, this just extra ensures that you're cooling 
the liquid down because, of course, the flour is at room temperature and the water is warm because we had boiling water in there, so it just equalizes that that much more. It's process of thermodynamics and such, right? Okay, so now I got a real porridge mush, right? From the three cups of flour we added. Okay, now we're gonna add the yeast. So, uh, where is that? I mean, I don't necessarily think the kind of yeast you use matters too much. Uh, I wouldn't get yeast from a corner store. I'd get something that's, you know, I go to a store where um, bakeries buy stuff. And I use this here stuff, which I find to be okay. I don't get any money from these guys. It's called Saf Instant. All right, so anyway, you got your yeast. I keep it in the freezer. We're going to put in two heaping teaspoons of that. One, two. That's enough. All right, we'll put that back in the fridge. Now, I've had good results with just about every kind of uh, yeast, as long as you get something that just hasn't been, like, you know, when I was a... A young lad uh, trying to make it in the big city. Uh, if I want to make bread, I'd go to like a corner store and buy packs of yeast from there. And that's just, you don't know how long they've been there. You don't know what temperature they, you know, all that sort of stuff. So I would say go to a, you know, go to a grocery store, of course. But boy, if you can get to a place, if you can go to the store where the bakery buys their stuff, that's where I buy these giant bags of flour and that's where I buy this yeast. I would do that. All I'm here doing here is working this yeast in. Uh, you get a better deal, right? You're, if, you, if you use a big bag of flour like this, you know, you can make your bread for, I don't know, anywhere from 25 to 50 cents a loaf, depending on the cost of the flour, cost of your inputs, the cost of electricity or propane or natural gas, whoever you heat your stove, right? Uh, at least based on my math, right? It's somewhere in that range. That's a lot cheaper than... I mean, even crap bread at the grocery store now is two bucks, and it goes up from there. And the bread you're going to make with this recipe is like the, the really good stuff <laughs> that you'd spend a lot of money for, right? Okay, so I think I've got the yeast worked in there. Now we're going to add some more flour. So I'm going to add two. I know this takes at least like seven, but I like to add it gradually. It just, it's just easier to deal with. All right, so I'll stir that. So now I'm at five cups of flour, okay? So I'm stirring that in, just using a stick here. I, I find a stick is better than a spoon. Um, when you try to mix up flour using a spoon, it's, it's really hard to push it back and forth. I tend to break spoons. I'm reasonably strong, but I, I tend to break them. And uh, you know, a lot of people that use uh, a machine to make bread, that sort of thing, I mean, if that's what you got to do, you got to do that. But I think a lot, half the reason people find it hard is because they're not using a stick. <laughs> I mean, sure, if you've got arthritis or, you know, some sort of problem like that, whatever, right? But you'd be surprised how much easier it is. Even if you have a wooden spoon, I got one here. Yeah. Even if you have a wooden spoon, instead of using it like this, use it like this. <laughs> It'll work a lot better for bread. Just trust me on that. It's just easier to do. Okay, so that's five cups of flour. And now we're sort of, you know, it's still pretty, still pretty wet, okay? I'm going to add another one. Now you notice I'm sort of adding them one at a time because I don't want to go, you know, the ideal solution for having really nice soft bread is to add just enough flour relative to the water to get this optimal ratio. Okay, so now the flour is sort of coming away from the bowl and sticking to the stick. It's still sticking to the bowl a bit. It's still a bit, so it's, so I mixed that all in, but it's still a bit wet in my mind. So I'm gonna add one more. So this is, this is cup number seven. I think that'll do it. Okay, but you do have to do these things by eye sometimes because humidity matters, right? It could be very humid, so the flour in your bag is humid, right? Or the flour could be very dry, and the flour in your bag is, is very dry. So, I mean, we're mixing this, but of course we're also, to some extent, uh, kneading this bread. And uh, I guess I should speak to while I'm doing this. Um, I've done videos before on no-knead breads. 
And I mean, a no-knead bread is easier to do, but and it tastes good and you'll like it. But you are not going to, I'm sorry, you're just not going to get like bread that's going to be the envy of anyone. <laughs> you're not going to get exceptional bread without some kneading, some working of the dough. Right, the, you know, the, the gluten gets activated by that activity. And when the gluten's activated in bread, you know, assuming you're not on some sort of gluten-free diet, um, the bread just gets softer and more springy and more elastic. And, um, you know, you, you, can, you can argue with me about that, but, uh, I mean, there's a reason bakeries don't sell no-need bread. <laughs> right? <laughs> People want soft you know, springy, that, that, that delicious bread, right? So now this is, it, it's staying on the stick, right? So this is, you know, it falls off eventually, right? But basically we got, it's come away from the bowl. It's firm enough that I can pick the whole thing up. If I wait long enough, it goes. But for me, that's good enough. We're gonna be putting a bit more flour in here anyway when we need it and stuff like that, because you have to flour the, you know, flour the counter and all that sort of stuff to keep it from sticking while you're kneading it. So we're still gonna be adding more flour to this anyway. So for me, this is good. At this stage, all I do is just go around the bowl with some, this is just regular vegetable oil. I just went around twice. One, two. It's like a ketchup squirter with vegetable oil in it. Right, and you just take the, the flour, oil your hands so your hands don't stick to the bowl. Or so, so your hands will stick to the flour and just work it around for a second like that just work it around so that it doesn't stick to the bowl see so I'm, I'm sort of doing a quick knead here just I'm just squeezing squeeze and twist sort of thing right just a little bit okay we're gonna do we're gonna do more kneading so you don't have to go crazy at this stage right now we're gonna let time do a lot of work okay so I mean there's different approaches to doing this. I in, I'm inclined to sort of do a lazy approach. So I'm going to let this, this will be risen in about 50 minutes, but I'm gonna leave it for like an hour and a half. And that'll allow all the flour in there to really hydrate well, everything to just get uh, nicely uh, intermingled and worked in and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I see a lot of um, cooking shows, baking shows and that sort of thing where they, uh, I'm trying to find a lid here, where they put plastic over the bowl. And it seems like in every cooking show, people try to use as much plastic as they possibly can. How about you just do that? <laughs> just take a lid from one of your pots or your big fry pans, stick it over the bowl. Then you don't have to throw away a bunch of plastic. Anyway, this is my, <laughs> not trying to get preachy here, but uh, okay, so I'm gonna leave this for about an hour and a half. Okay, we'll see you in an hour and a half. All right, so it's been a good hour and a half now, and uh, what I didn't show you off camera was that I put a whole bunch of blankets and stuff. I put a, I set a sweater over there, and just some tea towels and stuff like that, just to hold some of that heat in, right? Just a simple way of creating a little incubation. Wow, it's gone all the way up to that lid. Wow, so now the bowl is full, right? And that's well risen. And there's uh, there's good, I can feel, you know, some heat. It's basically, it's warmer than the air, you know. All right, so we got that. Now we gotta divide this in half and do some kneading, all right? And uh, I think kneading is a, a skill. Some might say it's an art. Uh, I don't know, that really depends on your, your idea of what art is. It's at least, at the very least, it's a skill. All right, so we're going to put some flour here. I'm actually going to bring the camera in so you can see what I'm doing a little bit more closely. All right, so yeah, if there's an aspect of, of making bread that I think's intimidating for people, I think this might be it. Some people think this is too much work or this is too hard. Um, some people don't know how to do it. Some people don't want to do it and so on. It is not a lot of work. <laughs> it just isn't. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so see, this came out of the bowl pretty easy because I, I greased the bowl. And when I put that oil in the bowl, I might have put 
a tablespoon, two tablespoons there. It just keeps it from sticking. And you know, that oil gets in the bread and gives it a nice, uh, does have an effect on the texture. So I'm gonna put some flour on top here. I'll flour my hands a little bit, All right? Should have taken my wedding ring off before that, but too late now. Now I'm just gonna buy, I divide this in half. It's a lot easier. If you try to knead the entire ball, it's just, it's just harder to do. So cut it in half. That makes your work easy. Just toss that around a little bit. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna knead this one half here, okay? Okay, so kneading is a process of, yes, you're working more flour into the dough, um, but that's not the goal of the kneading. It's about stretching and activating the gluten in the flour. I mean, there's a lot of fad diets, uh, poo-pooing gluten. If you have some sort of gluten intolerance or celiac disease or whatever, that's bad, but <laughs> if you don't have that, <laughs> it's just your body is totally fine with it. People have been eating uh, bread made from wheat uh, for thousands of years, practically since the dawn of civilization in varying respects, right? So, I mean, the human physiology has a perfectly fine relationship with bread. Um, so, uh, all I'm doing here, and after that good hour and a half rest, it really does make this dough behave. It just, if you force the kneading, if you start kneading too early, you have to do so much work. And if you just wait and have it, let it have a good, I mean, this bread, I think this yeast will rise the bread in 45 minutes, but if you wait the whole hour and a half, everything just behaves. Look how elastic that is. It just behaves so much better, right? All you're doing is you're, you're, you're pushing your hand along. See how the, it's sort of rolling over? And then you're turning it and pushing it again. Turning it and pushing it again with your heel of your hand. And so when you get good at it, you know, it's not a lot of work. So for me, each, each one of these should have this done 50 times for a really good bread with this recipe, okay? So it's, it's a lot, but it doesn't take long. I mean, I've, let me just see, let's see how long it takes to do 10. I'm not gonna do the whole thing on camera because you'll be bored to death. We go one, two, three, four, five, make sure the whole thing's rolling over. Six, see how it's rolling, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so basically it takes like a second for each. So basically to knead this 50 times, it takes about a minute. You need a little bit more flour, bring the flour in, right? We're not adding any more flour than we have to. Kneading is not about working flour into the dough. When the dough came away from the bowl and it was sticking to the stick and it was all sort of together, we basically had enough flour, the right flour water ratio to have a nice soft bread. You're only using the flour here to keep it from sticking to your hands and from sticking to the board. That's what you're using flour for here. It's really not about, you are working additional flour into it, but that's not what you're doing. Okay, so I don't know if we've hit 50 yet, but we're pretty close. I haven't been counting. All right, but that's, that's a general process, right? We want to get a good, I don't know, <laughs> not counting it. I don't want to not do it enough, right? But I'm going to say we've probably hit 50 here, okay? So now I'll put this over here to rest a little bit. Now I'll take this one and do it 50 times, all right? So let's just, just so you can see how long it takes. I might speed this up later on, who knows, but let's count. So that's about 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 8, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. All right, there. So we've given each one a really good knead, okay? Now, I have to shape these into uh, loaves, right? Now, at this stage, you could let them sit for, let's say, 15 minutes, give them another quick knead, and then shape the loaves. Um, 
you know, because then you get like a double rise, but you don't have to. So I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to proceed from here, okay? Because uh, this is all you have to do. To, you'll see the bread's going to turn out just fine. It's all because we gave it that really good hour and a half rise from the start. Okay, so now I'm just going to take each of these piles of dough and sort of arrange them into a, oh, oval shape, almond shape, like that, okay? And then I roll it up like that. This helps it rise properly and get a really good shape when it rises because we're not using a, a proper bread pan for this. We're kind of using like a, almost like a roasting pan. So, and then I'm pinching this seam here, right? There's a seam where it goes together. I'm pinching that to closed, okay? Don't worry about the way it looks. It'll all work itself out, okay? I've done that with the one loaf. I'll do the same thing with this loaf, right? Give it a quick little knee because it's been sitting. All right, now I'll just flatten her out. All right, we're trying to keep her kind of oval. Almond, oval, oval, whatever you want to call that shape. All right, it's sort of like that, all right? Okay, almost like you're making a pizza. I'll stick to my hands a bit here. I'll roll that up. And then start pinching. All right, so it'll hold its shape. Almost like you do a quick, quick pinch just to sort of tack it together. Then you put the seam up so you can really, you know, really pinch those that seam together. Don't worry about the fact that you rolled it up. It won't come apart. There's moisture in this. The whole thing will seal itself together. Okay, now I'm gonna zoom the camera out to show you what I'm doing next. All right, now for me, this is the key aspect of this. Okay, I've got a pan. Okay, and this pan is like nine by 12 in dimension. It's a roasting pan, like you do your turkey dinner in or whatever. Okay, nine inches by about 12 inches. That's the dimension of this. And it's just a stainless steel pan, nothing special. Okay, I, I probably got this at a yard sale or, or maybe even at Value Village. And it, it'll likely last me uh, the rest of my life. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take cornmeal and I'm going to completely liberally sprinkle it so that it's everywhere, just like almost like a snowfall, right? So the entire bottom of the pan has the cornmeal everywhere, just like it fell out of the sky. All right. Now I'm going to take these, I'm going to put the the seam, you know, I got the seam where I joined them together, seam side down in the pan. Do the same thing with this one, seam side down. Now we won't burst open, right? And these are just side by side in the pan. Okay, you see that? Oh, slid together. Okay, side by side. Now what I'm going to do, i got to bring the camera back in again. I shouldn't have zoomed it out, I guess. Now what I'm going to do, now you can see there's space between the two loaves in the pan. There's spaces here and that's that sort of stuff, right? So now I'm going to slash the tops of these loaves. Just go in the middle, go in the middle between the middle and the end, and then every other one. So what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven slashes. Middle, other middle. <laughs> And then the other middles you just made sort of thing. Okay, you slash them like that. Then you take this cornmeal and sprinkle it over the whole thing. Get it in those cracks, get it everywhere. Okay, most of it's going to fall off, but some of it will stick to the bread. And what this does, I mean, it, so the cornmeal on the bottom keeps it from sticking to the pan. Cornmeal on top gives it this excellent crunchy taste texture when you're biting into it. It's really nice. All right. So now all I'm going to do is let this rise and I like to give it at least an hour. There's a, there's a point where you let it rise too much and basically you exhaust the capacity of the bread to, to expand and sort of hold its elasticity. Um, I've left it as long as two hours. I would say uh, 45 minutes is a minimum. An hour is good. An hour and 15 is good. That sort of thing. Uh, in general, I let it rise until I can't see the bottom of the pan anymore. Right now there's a space. If there's a space here, I can touch the pan. These are not filling the pan, right? After a good hour, 
this entire pan will be full of bread and the top of the bread will be like as high as the top of the pan, maybe a little higher, right? So that's what you want to wait for, okay? So yeah, it's, it's like 11.30 in the morning, that sort of thing right now. I'm going to let this rise till, you know, at least 12.30, maybe even 1 o'clock, okay? And uh, I'll come back and see you then. And at this point, I mean, some people put it in an incubator. They do all kinds of different things. It's 20 degrees Celsius in the house right now. It's like 68, 69 Fahrenheit if you're in a place that uses Fahrenheit. Uh, this is totally fine. I just leave it like this. It's totally fine. I don't cover it. I don't do anything. I just leave it on the counter right here. <laughs> we'll see you in about an hour. All right, so it's been actually two hours. I got busy doing other stuff, and this has been rising for, well, an hour and 45 minutes. That's a long time. I hope I didn't let it go too long. Uh, but I find with this technique, it's, it's fairly forgiving of, of that sort of thing. So now all this, and you can see it's really, really risen good, right? <laughs> and the entire pan is filled, right? So uh, all that's left to do is put this in the oven. Now for this here, it's really easy. You turn the thing on, you hit the bake, you set the oven to 400 degrees. You turn the oven on. Put the bread in the oven. Set a timer. I got the oven rack about medium, sort of in the middle of the oven, not low, not high, sort of in the middle. And set a timer for 40 minutes. 40 minutes, the bread will be done. That's a cold oven. The oven was not preheated or anything like that. This is why this is so easy. Cold oven, put the bread on, turn it to 400. I guess it's my oven's Fahrenheit, 400. 40 minutes. I'll see you in 40 minutes. We'll see how this bread looks. Unbelievable. I just took this out of the oven and I realized I didn't have the camera on. So <laughs> I'll just repeat what I just did. I took it. I took it out of the oven after 40 minutes. This, it came right out of the pan. And as soon as I got out of the pan, I pulled the two loaves of bread apart. I need to get them apart so the air can get at the part where they were together. I cut off a piece. Uh, after carefully explaining that you should let the bread sit for about an hour before you cut into it. Uh, but I'm making a video here, so I have to taste it and I have to, you know, react. Um, but yeah, when you take bread fresh out of the oven, there's still, <clears throat> you know, remember the bread went into the oven with a certain degree of moisture in it. It comes out of the oven with a certain degree of moisture in it. And it's going to be at its best about an hour after you pull it out of the oven. Once that moisture's had a chance to sort of to redistribute itself and even itself out. All that having been said, I cut the end off a piece of bread, put a little butter on it. And, um, man. I mean, this will be better in half an hour. <laughs> that is really good. <laughs> the cornmeal makes it so crunchy. I don't, know, I don't know why this recipe works so well, but it does. So there you have it. Homemade bread. Not hard to do. I mean, sure, we kneaded it 50 times, but it took a minute a loaf. Not hard. Okay. Delicious. If you've got kids or family or whatever, they're going to, whoever you know, if you give them this bread, they're going to love you. They're going to thank you. This will be the high point, and it's not hard to do. You can do this once a week. No problem. And these will last about, keep them in the fridge, they'll last a week easily. Keep them on the counter in a plastic bag. Three, four, five days, that sort of thing. You gotta use them up. You won't have any problem using this bread up. <laughs> you might have problems sticking with your diet if you make this bread because it's so good, you just wanna eat it. <laughs> anyway, hope you found it interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun in your garden, have fun in your kitchen. Thanks for watching.